During university, I always looked forward to an event called Clubs Day. Dozens of different clubs and organizations set up tables and booths and try to convince students to join their club. And I loved it because there were so many interesting clubs, like the chess club, the tennis club, the beekeepers group, the LARPing club. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. What's a, what's a LARPing club? LARPing? Live action role playing. It's like where you dress up like in like you're from a different century and you do battles and stuff. It's a really great club. No, there's no way that's a thing that people... It is. You gotta Google it, man. You have swords and shields and even bow staffs. No. I have a spray bottle I use as a potion. No, it's not a thing. Yeah, you... It's so... There are so many different clubs, like the Debate Club and the Marine Biology Society. There were over a hundred different options and every single one of them wanted to convince you to sign up. I would do a reading club. I'm big on reading. A nap club? <laughs> I don't know. It will be a basketball club. Playing basketball, helping little kids. Chess. Chess club. You can teach me. Love chess. I started a chess club in middle school, actually. I think I would want to do like a fashion club, because I think that's a world thing that everybody loves. Like, guys can like it, girls can like it. Some people go overboard, some people underdress. And I think that it's fun that everybody can just express themselves and be unique. I don't know, maybe like a coffee drinking club? Go around and just drink a ton of coffee everywhere. I would start a painting by numbers club. I would definitely start a gardening club at my school. Like a party club, like a club where you just have parties. I used to think that becoming a Christian was like joining a club. Sign up, attend regular meetings, wear matching t-shirts, obey all the rules, and you're in. Yeah, but Christianity isn't a club you join. It's not determined by anything like what your parents believe or where you go on Sunday mornings. Yeah, and being a Christian is even more than just believing in God. A lot of people believe in God, but they wouldn't call themselves Christians. Yeah, so what does it mean to be a Christian? In the New Testament, it's described like this. Those who become Christians become new people. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. It's a whole new life. And it's found in a relationship with God through Jesus. In John's gospel, it says, to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. John is saying that our relationship with God is like a parent's relationship with their child. The Bible uses relational language to describe being a Christian, like father and son, or close friends, or even husband and wife. We met first when we were about 16, 15, and... I'm, I'm, I'm older. Yeah, by, by half a year. Yeah. <laughs> I had heard about Rachel, and then I met her, but I didn't know they were the same people. I knew her name, but I didn't need the connection. And so then I asked her friend for her Hotmail address, which is like, just a big deal. And I was like, they're the same people. The first I heard about, and kind of like from a distance, but didn't know. So before Facebook, there was MySpace. Before MySpace was MSN Messenger. And so that's, you get someone's Hotmail email address and you add them on mm -hmm. MSN Messenger and it was just like chat. You have all these dialogues. And I was very, very good at MSN Messenger. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing where you could like appear offline. And so like no one would see that you're online. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I would sit there and wait because I was going to university at the time. And then as soon as she would be online, I would like go from a peer offline to online and I'd be like, oh my goodness, like what are the chances of us both being online at the same yeah. time? And this is so good. And then I would just be all in and just like so focused for like an hour and a little bit. And then we just would connect at like parties every six months probably because yeah. you lived farther than me. Yeah, we lived in different cities. So I like literally I tried to do everything I could, became friends with her friends, became friends with her brother so I could hang out with Rachel more. I remember one time we we were going, like, we decided we would go on a hike or something like that. I think Ben came, it was actually. Ben, ben, ben came. Was driving. Yeah. And uh, he, we poured water on the front seat of the car so that 
when they I picked would, me up. So that so that n- near of us would sit in the front. It was like, oh, like the window was left open last night, so the front seat's soaking wet. So then we just sat <laughs> in the back and we chatted the whole way to. Mm. Did, what do you do? Grouse grind. They poured water. What did we do? We did a, what, where do we? Yeah, hike? grouse grind. It was horrible. It was a horrible hike. I had a good day. And we got married really young. Like I was 21 and you were 20, right? I was 21 as well. We're both 21. When I proposed, it was like a big deal. Mm-hmm. And like... It was amazing. I'd gone up the day before to Grouse Mountain, like the local ski hill. We scouted out the spot in the forest, all covered in snow. So I had all my friends. They went up early that day. They set up 25 lanterns and made like a pathway and roses and like chalk-covered strawberries and all that a kind of stuff. A couch made of snow. And then I said, hey, come with me this way. I want to show you this cool path I, I know. And then we went off the side and then we turned the corner and then it was like all like Narnia. Um, and obviously she knew. Did you know I, I, w- I didn't know up until I started to know when we were walking in the snow and he was holding my hand and like pulling me to this spot. But I thought we were going to a trail, but I knew something was up when I tripped and he kept pulling me. <laughs> I was like, what? I it just wasn't his usual, like, like he had something on his mind. I remember like... Checking, I said yes. Checking the ring with my snowboard gloves on. I mean, like, the dexterity with snowboard gloves is so poor and, like, trying to, like, look in my bag and make sure the ring was there and just so scared. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said yes. And I think that getting married and then now we have two kids. We have a third one on the way. Hmm. I don't know if you guys can tell, but Rachel's pregnant right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm truly amazed how our love has grown in the way that we do understand each other. Like, that makes me love him more. And then I think to when we'll be seniors and like how special that will be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It'll be special when we're seniors. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Just in love and old. At the end of Alpha, we often ask people a few questions to get feedback on their experience. One of the questions we ask is, would you have called yourself a Christian at the beginning of Alpha? Here's a few responses. Yes, but without any real experience of a relationship with God. Sort of. Not sure. Ish. Another person wrote, yes, though looking back, possibly no. Okay, hand those to me. Imagine for a moment if I was asked if I was married to Rachel and my response was, yes, but without any real experience of a relationship. Or sort of. Or not sure. Or ish. Or... Yes, though looking back, possibly no. Here's the thing. I know that I'm married to Rachel. And you know when you're in a relationship with someone. And God wants you to know if you're a Christian, that you're in a relationship with him. John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know that you're a Christian. You can know that you have faith. And you can know that you have eternal life. We have good reasons to be confident in our faith. Yeah, it's based on facts, not just feelings. It's not a blind leap of faith. It's a step of faith based on evidence. If you ask me how I know I'm married, I could show you a document, my marriage certificate. Now, I realize that's not as romantic as, say, a sunset in Paris or a walk along the Seine or lunch by the Eiffel Tower, but it is tangible proof that Rach and I are married. And if you ask me how I know that I'm a Christian, one of the things I could do is point to what's written in the Bible. Our confidence in our relationship with God is based on the unchanging promises we find in His Word. In the New Testament, in the letter to the Romans, it says, faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. And we hear about Christ through the Bible. It's one of the main ways our faith comes alive. Some days, I don't necessarily feel my relationship with God, but feelings change so easily, so I try not to let them dictate my level of faith. One of my favorite verses is in Romans 8, and it says that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. This is a promise from God that His love doesn't change, regardless of how we might feel. Another promise is in Revelation 3. Jesus says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. This verse describes Jesus knocking on the door of our lives. I love that Jesus says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, anyone, that means you. And then he says, I will come in and eat with that person. 
Eating together is a sign of friendship. He's saying God wants a friendship with us. Yeah, notice that he says, I will come in. Not I might come in or I'll think about it. You can be sure that if you invite Jesus into your life, he will come in and he'll always be with you now and for eternity. That's his promise. It's his word. Talking about eating together, thinking about those crepes. From Paris? I think, can you can go back through the door? Never try when the question comes up. Just go. Like personal relationship with God, that's beautiful. I think it's the same as having a personal relationship with anyone. Christianity, I think it's definitely a relationship with God. I don't think it's something that you can go around and force upon people. I think it's something you have to let people individually find for themselves. I would think it's probably fairly one way. So I think some people could have that relationship and some people just see it as religion. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Like being able to pray, trusting Jesus, I like it. It's hard to relate, I'd say, if someone I don't have a relationship with God not something I personally believe in. I think he's supposed to be like a friend for you, right? Or like a father figure. I don't know if you can have or how personal a relationship can be. I really, it's down to the individual. So if you were to ask me how I know that I'm married, I could look at my marriage certificate, but I could also point to a historical event. July 4th, 2009, my wedding. Oh, such a good day, man. And if you were to ask me how I know that I'm a Christian, I could look at the promises of God in the Bible and I could point to an event in history, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Romans 5.8 says that God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't wait for us to become perfect people. He made the first move by initiating the solution. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, God removed the barrier of sin that was between us. He made it possible for us to have a relationship with him. Some people think, I couldn't be a Christian. I'm not good enough. Christianity isn't for people like me. But Christianity is not for certain types of people. God's love is for everyone. So that means that you and I, we can come to God exactly as we are. It's not about what we do, it's about what's been done for us by Jesus on the cross. And this is why Romans describes salvation as a gift from God. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, and I guess that's why it's so hard for us to imagine that such a good gift could actually be free. It's like we expect there to be a catch or something. Oh, hey Jason, hey Ben, hey, you want a free ice cream cone? Ah, too good to be true. but eternal life is actually a free gift. It's better than anything we could imagine and there's no strings attached. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a cost. There's a huge cost. It cost Jesus his life. He paid the price so that we could have new life. We can't earn it, we can only receive it. Okay, we wanna look at two words, faith and repentance. Faith is something we're familiar with. We exercise faith all the time in big ways and in small ways. Whether it's faith in the bus driver to not crash, faith in a friend to keep a secret, or even faith in the chair you're sitting on to hold you up. A great description of the word faith is trust. It's trusting someone or something enough to act on that trust. It's leaning our whole weight upon Jesus and putting our faith in Him and what He's done for us on the cross. And this faith expresses itself in our lives in so many ways as we learn to love and obey Him. And then there's repentance. Repentance is a very heavy sounding word, but when you get down to the meaning, it actually describes something beautiful. Repentance is simply a change of thinking that leads to a change of living. It's recognizing the bad things in our lives, turning away from them as we turn to Jesus. It's asking God to forgive us for the wrong things we've done. Now the main way I know that I'm married is because it's something I experience every single day. I don't just know Rach loves me because of the vows we exchanged in 2009. No, I experience her love every single day. And the same is true in our relationship with God. Yeah, we experience our relationship with God and it's through the Holy Spirit. We can't see God's Spirit, but we do see His impact in our lives. Jesus said, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Well, God comes into our lives by His Holy Spirit and He makes His home in our hearts. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit being like the wind. Even though we can't see the wind, we see its impact and its power. In elementary school, my mom decided to send me to Canada for better education. 
And so I came here when I was in grade seven. In grade eight, one of my best friends, he was doing drugs, drinking. But that summer, he went to one of the church camp and his life changed and um, he told me about it. And I was like, maybe I should go to church for once and see what, like, what, what church is really about. He brought me to church and that's where it all started. If I was Christian, it was, I have no one to talk to. I felt empty, I felt fear, I was frustrated all the time. It was like I was judging people. I was insecure about what's going on in my life. In high school, I would just put a hood on, cover my face, just be that guy in the corner and just like have all these like bad thoughts about people. Like, I don't like you, don't talk to me. I'm gonna pick on you and bully you, being a jerk to people. After I became a Christian, people um, kind of asked me like, oh, what happened to you? Like, what's going on? And I told them like, hey, I'm, I'm a Christian now. All these things kind of stopped. It's kind of like a slowly thing. It was like, I prayed, I bought a Bible. I was just reading it. And um, just like slowly, I was making steps closer, closer, closer to God. And now, after I became a Christian, there's someone with me all the time. It's God himself. He really helped me in certain situations where it's like, when I'm desperate, when I'm like frustrated, or I'm like sad, and I'm like angry, I will like start praying, I will start talking to him. Having God with me, it's just like, it's calm and like, it's amazing. He's always there for me. I'm this guy right here who's checking himself out in the mirror. Of course. I think that was you. <laughs> Half in the pool. Yeah, with your top just kind just of remaining out. I could go fully under, but You're just I'm just chilling. Sad. I feel like I would be the one dipping the toe in. Because I've always seen in front of me, but I've always been like, do I want to wanna get further into it? I don't know, it's kind of cold. <laughs> I'm really close to him. As you can see, I'm right there. I'm not way down there. I'm close to him, but just sometimes I lose touch, basically. I'd be that guy walking in. He's ready to go scuba diving, but he looks happy, but he's definitely just entering the room. I guess I would be the lifeguard, because I'm not religious, so I don't feel like I'm actively a part of it. Oh, I'm the guy diving in. I'm the guy diving in. I'm the one that's diving into religion. Like, you know what? Faith, baby. <laughs> First John chapter three says this, what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. God is a perfect Father and He loves us more than we could ever imagine. God knows everything about you, the good and the bad, and yet He loves you. Yeah, this means that the one who knows you the best is the one who loves you the most. I grew up in a, a predominantly Latino kind of gang infested neighborhood, a lot of violence, a lot of, uh, lot of gang life, but a lot of like young families and um, you know, people just trying to trying to make the best of their life. It was around that same time also, I just kind of fell in love with hip hop. It just, it just, it sang my song, you know? I wasn't, I wasn't really attracted to the, uh, just kind of the gang life that was kind of around me. You know what I mean? I fell in love with the type of hip hop that was a lot about like, you know, knowledge of self and helping the community and, and, and you know, really a positive force in, in the culture. So that's the type of hip hop I, I fell in love with. My parents became believers when I was in elementary school and um, I think somewhere around middle school, I uh, became a believer. I remember our fifth and sixth grade Sunday school teacher just articulating the gospel. I just felt like this dude is this dude's just reading my mail. God as father, you know, if you, you come from a background like me, that's like somewhat of a stumbling block sometimes. Um, being a father, one, and then two, like my own experiences with my own father and, and uh, you know, the term just carries so much baggage. I guess there was a moment where I, I really did have to make a conscious decision to, to inform my personhood and just really trust the scriptures for my identity. But I think in a lot of ways, at least for my story, is that God as a father really gave me something in a, in a very selfish but tangible way, something to be proud of, something to, to look back and say, but this is who I am. I think the passion and the the, the personal knowledge and relationship with him kind of comes from the fact that even in that position of, of a global 
uh, universal kind of ruler who still took time to stoop down and identify me specifically gives me a, a sense of sonship and a sense of belonging and family. So, so, so living that freeness, that goodness, like I would hate for my daughter to think that like, if she failed a test at school or got sent to the principal's office somehow or another, she's any less my daughter, like, or, or I'm somehow so disappointed in her that she's no longer a part of my family. That's ridiculous. You're my daughter. I love you regardless. You know what I'm saying? So you belong. So now from that, we can work on, you know saying, you, you making better choices, but it, this doesn't change your status with me, you know what I mean? And I think it, we, we, we gotta keep that in the front of our minds that these things don't change our status with the Father. Like, you're, you're good, you're loved, still, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and there's no amount of mistakes that can change that. In Ephesians, Paul prays, may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. God wants you to know that you're his child, that you're loved, that you're in a relationship with him. If you're not sure that you're in that relationship and you'd like to be, we wanna give you an opportunity to pray. If that's not something you feel ready to do, that's totally okay, but we wanted to give you the chance. Here's what we'll do. I'll say a simple prayer and you can pray the word silently in your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me so much. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me so I could be forgiven. I receive your forgiveness, and I say yes to the invitation to a relationship with you. I turn from the bad stuff in my life, and I put my faith in you. I ask you to fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we wanna thank you guys for coming this far with us on Alpha. If you're anything like me, you've still got lots of questions, and that's great, because we've got a bunch more sessions coming up ahead. Oh yeah, oh yeah.